the big guest. She'll be strung up. Yes, have a Poor little helpless thing. <laughs> she was no dear baby. Mm. <laughs> I've got a little to here somewhere. There you are, our little smudge. Okay, let's put this in the book. A card school? Since when? Since Ollie asked me. To throw your money away? Hey, don't knock it. You used to call me Cincinnati kid at college. <sighs> What's up? Nothing. Oh, it's just that fertile time of month again. Oh, I am. Of course, if you'd rather pay cards with the lads... No, of course I wouldn't. Liar. Look, it'll only be for an hour or so. It might loosen me up. <laughs> That's exactly what I don't want. You know what I mean. And anyway, isn't winning supposed to be an aphrodisiac? And what if you lose? So it's all right for go, then. Just don't make it an all-nighter and remember... I'll be waiting. Mm. Oh, have you been stood up? No, no. Just lunching with intent. You glad to be back? Yeah. Like Miss Prim? Mm, most of the time. What's next? Oh, no, you're all right, Dad. Go home and have your tea. No, no, that's all your mail sorted out. There must be something else you need doing. Just lending a helping hand. I most certainly am. No, honest, Dad, we're all right. Oh, OK, then. In that case, I think I'll try some scran. All right, Jack, it's all right if I take five sweating cobs in there. Yeah, sure. How are you doing? Mm, I'm getting there. <laughs> all right, how's it going? Oh, fine, how are you doing? I'm fine. See you later. Hello, Hello, Mick. Hello, Bob Rookie. Yeah, just a sec. Um, is an Ollie Simpson in here? Hi. Oh, hi, Chris. Where are you? Oh, don't want to be in any of this foreign muck, do you, Dad? Ah, now that's the question, isn't it, love? Do I stay in my nice, comfy little leg and chip world, or do I move on to something more spicy? Oh, well, you've changed the tune. Yeah, well, there's nothing wrong with change, is there? So, do I have the red Thai curry or the Spanish meatballs? What do you think? Right. We all set then? Boys are right? No. That was one of them, Chris, on the phone just now. They went out for an Indian last night, an extremely dubious one by the sound of it. A pair of them have been E. coli'd. Game's off. Hi, <sighs> hi, Sky and Ollie's. All right, Tim. Look a bit up and bothered there, lad. Yeah. You busy? Enough. Well, uh, any further developments there? No, not at all, mate. So she hasn't blown you up to the busies then? I haven't got a blind clue. Have you spoken to her since? She's too scared to in case it sets her off. Well, you're going to have to do something sooner or later, lad, otherwise you're going to go crackers. That's a game of snap. Oh, well, let me guess, the Chuckle Brothers? Something like that. Just had our poker school kiboshed. Oh, dear. I suppose you're a gambling woman. Uh, no, but my dad's been known to have the odd fool, sir. Aye, aye. My ears are better than here. <laughs> really? What? Well, Max and Ollie were just wondering if you wanted to play cards with them. Yeah? Yeah, around at my place. Oh, I don't know. Wouldn't like to see you two fellas go bankrupt. <laughs> oh, nothing would give me greater pleasure than to take your money off your run. Well, I was just going to order meatballs, actually. Well, I've done quite a few, um, nibbles. Oh, well, it's going to be nibble. Oh, go on, Dad. You really enjoy it. Ah, oh, yeah, all right. Go ahead. But I warn you, cool and Luke isn't in it. I'll get me cold. Great. You've just made me a very happy woman. Ah, that's one mug of panther we've roped in. One more sap, we'll be in clover. <laughs> All right, gents. Hi, right, Jack. Can I have a place of lighter, please? Cheese. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> For all Lindsay's butties. She's on late over the road. I don't know, she works in a chippy and she's got me making a carry out. Must think Mick poisons his batter on the sly. How are you, love? <sighs> love, what's up? <laughs> Sorry. No, it's all right, love. Here you are. Mm. One of these. <laughs> I just... Yeah, I know. I'm just like that, you know. Every time I think about our little Jimmy. You just can't help yourself, can you? No, it's... it's not that. 
How could they do it? I, I don't understand. To what, love? Does <laughs> that make I'm my own little sister? You're not making much sense, love. They, they got a pillow and, and they shoved it over her face and, and, they, and they suffocated the life out of her. Make any lane? Let's have a pair of trousers. Let's have a look. Have you sit down first, please? Yeah, of course. There's a chilli for tea. No, thanks. I went to Kentucky on the way home. All right. Oh, well, it'll keep. If you're knackered, why don't you go and have a lie down? Nah, it works. So, doesn't mean we can't have a little rest together first, or does it? Oh, so when we go on the bar, you can tell all your mates the gory details. No, thanks. Are you sure you've got it right, love? Well, Mick probably had his hand up Elaine's back doing his Lord Charles impression, but yeah, I got it from the horse's mouth. So do you think maybe, you know, your mum asked them to do it? She wasn't fit enough to ask anyone for anything. No, I'm just saying, maybe she reached that point, you know, where... She wanted to be put out of her misery. People feel like that all the time. We don't go around killing them. Maybe they thought it was for the best. How could any of this be for the best? I'm not saying it was, love. Maybe they thought it was. I mean, they've been honest and told you about this, haven't they? No, they haven't been honest with me. They just kept the secret until me sister couldn't handle her guilt no more. It's Mick Johnson, this is. <laughs> Wanna bet? He's been calling the shot since the day they met. But he thought the wheels of Gladys. Oh, yeah, right. Saint Mick, super dad, took me mum off the streets and all that. Well, do saints go round pumping people full of heroin? Heroin? What heroin? I'm not with you. Well, when my mum was getting really bad, wonderful Dr Mick decided to inject her with heroin. For a pain life. Poor woman. She didn't have a clue what was going on. She just lay there, out of it. And that get was filling her full of some crap that he bought from some snide street corner drug dealer. Yeah, but I mean, if, if it was for the pain. Am I going mad? Am I the only one? Can't you see that this is wrong? So what are you going to do? I love my sister, but the way I'm feeling right now, well, don't you think they should be punished for what they've done? Four oh, oh, thank you. Sam, Cheers. Pass us those twiglets, will you, young man? Right, are we all right for eats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All all right. Right. Let's roll. Right, what are we right. playing? Uh, straight poker. Jack's to open, minimum bet, say, what, two quid? Well, why don't we make it more interesting? Call it a fiver. Oh, hang on, that's a bit heavy, isn't it? And I always thought you had the stomach for a fight, so... Well, right, well, I'm in. Huh. Ron? Well, if the minimum's a fiver, what's the maximum? Oh, 25? Aye, all right, go on, yeah. right, fella. Right, fine, let's do it. Gotta make sure Paul Daniels hasn't worn all the spots off them cards first. <laughs> you want me to deal? Yeah, yeah whatever. Right, okie dokie, eyes down. And look in. There you go, my love. Call again, eh? See ya. Bye. Whoops, see ya. Must you please, don't forget them. <laughs> hey, hey, not trying to get your hands on my scallops again, are you, Jack? No, Jimmy, I'm. I have to tell you, love, I could quite easily get bored by all this attention. Know what I mean? <laughs> Jimmy. Don't suppose you can help yourself, though, can you? Jimmy, for just hey. once in your life, will you shut up and listen? What? My glass go. Hey, it's not bad for me as weak, is it? No. I'll let see you make your comeback. Hmm. But there's a few of me staff which have been with a personality transplant. Don't be soft. Now, I know I've been a right car recently, it's but it's going to be different from now on. So, how's a happy couple, anyway? All right, I'm just a bit knackered, though. Oh, Casanova being wearing your house again. There you go. No, no I'm just... Hey, Percy right. Filth, hear a minute. What have you been doing to my staff? Oh, Jackie, please. I know you're newlyweds and all that, but... Well, can't you control yourself? Poor girl's walking around like a zombie. <laughs> Sardering.
Your five, and raise it five. I said I'm out. I'll just nip the bug. Top of the stairs, straight ahead. Right, on me, is it? Uh, ten and... Go on, what the hell? Raise it ten, eh? I'll match that. Um... Today would be nice, Max. Show us yours then, Ron. No, I'll tell you what, Alt. Show us yours, eh? I'll see you. Liberace, wild and crisp. You what? Three queens to you. Oh! <laughs> I got three queens, eh? Pretty good, that, yeah. Not as good as a rum, mind you, but uh, tickled me. <laughs> hey, Queens, you out of whack, Ollie. Coast clear. Pardon? Is your dad in? Yeah, do you want him? No, I want you. Well, I didn't know you cared. You're funny, aren't you? Meant to be a right owl, man. No listening to the news on my courses. Yeah, I've got a list sorted. Uh, there's not many left, though. Great, we'll hand him over. I've not printed it out yet. But last. All right, Jim. What are you doing here? Who is it, Dan? Oh. Hi. Uh, I sure changed your lad earlier on in the chippy. I owe you the pound. Thanks. All right. Cheers. So, washing machine on the blink, is it? Fridge? Sorry? Uh, no, no, um, we've got a bit of a card school going, you know. Oh, is that right? Love a game of cards, mate. Hey, at this race, I'm going to be going home with the keys to your resi. <laughs> we'll see. Back to my ever-expanding business empire. Is that okay, Mike? Yeah. What business empire? Mm -mm. Come on, cracks. You just concentrate on the cards, eh, pal? And then there were five. Ladies and gentlemen, place your bets. <laughs> it's five minimum, 25 maximum bet. Is that pence? <laughs> oh, yeah, twice, mate. Pull up a chair. Uh, uh, it's okay, I've only got a tenner on me. Ron? Ah. Please do not ask for credit as a refusal, very often offence. Boring. You all right, Jim? Do you want to lend some? No, it's OK. A bit rich for my blood. Right, sorry. Come on, then. Your deal. Yeah, come Cheers. on, Maxie. I've been lucky, son. All right. Are we all in? OK. Well, enjoy yourselves, then, lads. That's going to change. How are you dealing with faster, Max? Doing my best. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Christian. What? About before. I'm busy. I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I didn't think Jackie were going to... Yeah, well, she did, didn't she? Cos you can't keep things to yourself. Private things. You've made a joke out the honeymoon and you made me out to be a right meth. If you really were sorry, you wouldn't say anything to anybody about us again. All right? <laughs> There's a gang of them waiting outside. Stay with when you come quietly. Yeah. It's a stripper gram, you divvy. Table three, you've got a birthday cake stashed away in the fridge. Could you take it over for us? Yes, <laughs> Jackie, can you do us a favour? Yeah, fired away. Well, please, can you stop talking about me and Christian? How do you mean? Well, you know, about bed and stuff. I was only choking. Yeah, but he doesn't like it. Yeah, well, you shouldn't have revealed all then, should you? I'm serious, Jackie. He's dead upset. Oh, dear, I'm... Jackie, it's not funny. He's my husband. And if he wants to keep things okay, private, then... OK, OK, fine. Whatever you say. Thanks. Here you go, Maxie. Read them and weep. Oh, mm. <laughs> I do apologise, gentlemen, but thank you very much indeed. So, come on, Ron, it's your turn, mate. You'll tell us where did it all start going horribly wrong for you and Dee Dee. Oh, come on, lads. Do we have to talk about our ex-wives all night? Why can't we talk about some women that we fancy for the change? Uh -huh. <laughs> OK, then. So, if you could play hide the salami with any woman in the whole wide world, right, any woman, who would it be? Right, is it me to put in? 
Yeah. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, well, right. <coughs> I'll start with the fiver. Mm. Ring, ring. Yeah. Your fiver and raise the openers 20. Oh, no. A bit rich for me, there. Yeah, no. I'm out. Any woman. Come on, are you putting me in or not? Uh, no, no thanks. Oh, isn't it marvellous? Look, I got a flush there as well. Do you know what? I never would have guessed. <laughs> <laughs> so come on, then. Choose your woman. Any woman. Mm -hmm. Well, go on, Sin. You go first. Any woman. Um. Oh, me bed, Carmel. Where'd you keep your sick bags off? Me bed, Carmel. I'm serious. I'm selling you. Come on, Ollie. It must have been the same for you at once, huh? What, so if I had to make a choice between my ex and Michelle Pfeiffer? Oh, mm. no, let me think. That's a toughie. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? I always fancy giving Maggie Thatcher one. Hey, she must be about 80. Not now, you goose cock. When she was in her prime. Oh, I don't know so much. I mean, Ron only wants to do with her what she did to the country for 10 years. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> right, Mick. Hello, Jimmy. You got a minute? Yeah. I know. About what? About Clantus. What do you mean? Save it. Used a pillar, didn't you? Oh, come on, Jimmy, you back on the drugs or what? Cassie told Jackie. She knows about the heroin and all. Now, I don't care who did what over there. I know your Martin Bob was in a bad way. And you don't strike me as some kind of murderer, Mick. But I've got my life sorted. I've got Jackie. I've got me kid. I've got me course. And I am not getting sent down just because I did you a favour. So if that Cassie one blows you up to the busies, my name had better stay out of it, Mick. Because if it doesn't, I'm going to say you came round asking how much smack you'd need to kill someone. Got it? I'll see ya. Right. There's your 20, and I'll raise it... 25. Right, so what's uh, your 25? And seeing as it's just the two of us left, shall we dispense with the maximum bet? Now, now, boys. Suits me. Right, in that case, I'll raise you £100. Mm. <laughs> now, don't do anything till I get back. £100. £100, eh? What do you think, Sin? Oh, don't ask me. <laughs> How much have you got left there, Maxie? Yeah. See for yourself. So, if I were to raise it again, yeah. then you couldn't afford the bet, could you? I'll write you a cheque. Oh, I don't know about that, Max. i fussy on Gregory's. Remember me? Oh, hi. <laughs> um, yes, of course. Uh, this is the last hand. Oh, it's always the last something with you boys, isn't it? The last drink, the last five minutes of the match, the last supper. Yeah, no, honestly, don't. How's it going? The towns are gone. So go on, then. How much have you lost? Look, please, just bear with me and we'll walk out of here, me being a wealthy man. So, it's going to cost me a ton to see what you've got. But is that a ton as in £100? Not daft, is she? What, you're playing for £100 a hand? No, 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 not at all. Well, and I take it that is the pot? It's just a one-off. Oh, come on, Max. Even an idiot like me knows that that hand isn't what. <laughs> well, I tell you what, Max. You've twisted me arm, so... just for the sake of the game... I'll see you. King High. Three threes, Max. 
You were bluffing, weren't you? You cheeky little monkey. <laughs> Sorry. Thanks for the game, Mom. No, uh, thank you. We'll see ourselves out, sir. Yeah, night. See ya. Ta-da. See ya. <laughs> Ta-da, Max. Hi, <laughs> chaps. Who's in? Um, virtually wiped out. Might just call it a night. Ah, fair enough. How about you, Sin? Fancy cutting the cards five at a time while Ollie clears up? The joking at you, the run you're on. <laughs> Can't say I blame you, mate. There was magic in the air tonight. Is that what you call it? <laughs> hey, the big question is, when's the next one? So, how many beers did you have then? One or two. You promised me. A couple of beers is hardly going to induce chronic brewer's droop now, is it? It doesn't help. If you hadn't blown that last hand, my sperm count might have gone through the roof. I think I'd waited long enough, don't you? I'm in the palm of my hand. You told me an hour. Yes, yes, a, a, a metaphorical hour. A male hour. I'm sorry, darling, but this hardly justifies the, the nagging wife routine. What? Is that what you see me as? No, no. A lagging wife? Have you forgotten what all this is about? Have you forgotten why we're trying to have another baby? I'm not a nagging wife. I'm a grieving mother, but if you can't see that... Yes, of course I can see that. I see it 24 hours a day. I live with it, for God's sake. You know, I'd be very interested to know what you see when you look at me. I mean, what exactly is my role in all this? Emotional crutch? Walking sperm bank? Because what I am is a grieving father who managed for the first time since his children were taken away from him to numb that awful pain that follows me round everywhere. So I had a couple of beers. I lost a couple of quid and I worried about myself instead of worrying about you for a couple of hours. And for a couple of minutes, somewhere in the middle of all that, I forgot to think about my dead children. Well, I'm sorry. But there you go. Could millions of people have starved to death because of British wartime policies? Four's Indian summer season begins with secret history's story of the forgotten famine, next. Mm. 
tell you what, Maxie, them BSC cranks can say whatever they like. You can't be a good state. No. Would you have mine host care to put himself up a glass and uh, sample this cheeky little number? No, thanks. Go on, treat yourself. After all, you pay for it. <laughs> yes, so you keep reminding me. So when do you fancy another game, then? Unfortunately, I'm retired here just at the moment. In the doghouse? Yes. Delivering for Mr. Farland. Yes, I thought it was. Hello. Hi. What's all this? They're for you. From who? From your penitent wife. Oh, I, I thought... Isn't this the wrong way round? I really went off the deep end last night. Must be all hormones. <laughs> Mine too. I realise you're entitled to the odd night out, as long as it's only once a year. <laughs> if you want them or not. Thanks. What time will you be home? Early. Good. Right. Well, I'll see you then, then. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 For me? Oh, Maxie, I couldn't. Can't buy the love of a good woman, Ron. What a bet. One spaghetti and one steak. Thanks. Chris? Yeah? Um, I'm gonna go on my break in a minute. I was wondering, do you mind if I show Jackie our honeymoon photos? Don't mind. Of course not. <laughs> what do you think I am? I just thought I'd check with you first, you know. Be soft. You don't have to ask me permission. I bet you'd be dead jealous. Yeah? Okay, thanks, Mrs. Hewitt, and I'd be grateful if you kept me posted. You're welcome. Jackie, do you fancy cappuccino? Uh, no, not at the moment, thanks. Oh, go on, I was going to show you my holiday snaps. Rachel, I said not now. And that's two fish and chip suppers, one mushy peas, and a pound of fat. Five forty, mate. Just right, thanks. See you now. Pound of fat for you and all as a kid. No, it isn't, actually. I'll just have the curry rice and chips. Thanks very much. Coming up. Will the boss keep an eye on you, does he? Yeah, something like that. You yeah, all right? OK, thanks. Yeah. Uh, still doing this teaching, like? Aye, aye. Well, keep that under your hat, will you? Yeah, I'm doing. I'm supposed to be getting a bit more info after work, you know, when I've knocked off, like... You're off your key, you. Hey, do you want to speak up a bit there, boys? What? Hey? Well, I take it I am the main topic of conversation here. I th Hold on a minute. Well, you both know the score, don't you? So it's only natural you want to swap notes. Both know what? He knows as well. Both know what? It's all right, sir. Me and Jimmy have had our little clear the air session, so I know what he's a gossiping about. Hey, hang on, I'm not gossiping about anything. Mick, straight up, he hasn't said anything to me. And vice versa, believe it or not. What were you talking about then? No, hang on. I'd rather know what you're talking about, actually. Gladys. Oh, I don't believe it. You haven't put an ad in the Echo, have you? I suppose he knows about the heroin as well. Heroin? Not exactly, no. Oh, for crying out loud. What heroin? you better tell him, Jimmy. No, oh, no, go ahead. You get on with it. You're the ringmaster. Jimmy sorted us out with a bit of gear for Gladys. You got him to get you smacked. Sin, you know how desperate she was for more morphine. The doctor wouldn't give her enough. We had to do something. Does the lovely Cassie know this? She doesn't know where it came from. She's not going to find out either. Oh, she's still stalling the busies. Well, if she does decide to grass you up, all this drug dealing's going to do you no favours, is it? Oh, gee, thanks, mate. I haven't thought of that. I'm sorry. It's OK. God almighty. Hi, hi. Three musketeers, eh? Hi, love. Have I interrupted something? Like what? Well, you look like you're planning your next big bank job. Yeah, right. Um, one sec, can you take her to fish home? No chips? No, she's on a diet. Does she know the score? No, she doesn't. Please try to keep your gums shut. Hey, it's not us you've got to worry about. No? It's your mate over the road. Beach. I mean, you leave didn't last very long, does it? Oh, 
I've really upset you, haven't I? No, as if. Asking you to look at stupid photos when you've only just come out of hospital. No, it was... Well, it was nothing to do with you. Come on, let's have a news. Are you sure? Yeah. I might have to squint a bit, like. They're mostly just at the beach in the hotel room, really. Right. That's us checking in. That's our room. Oh, that looks nice. It's great stuff in his face. <laughs> Some boring statue we took in town. And that's at the flea market. That was a good laugh. Um, what about this beach? I know, I thought we had loads by the pool as well. Better ask David Bailey. Chris? Yeah, can I help you, ladies? I've just been showing Jackie the holiday photos and we've got loads missing. The ones on the beach. Oh, yeah, I was looking forward to seeing you in your thong. <laughs> Hate to disappoint you, Jack, but you never turned out. Mum said they were overexposed or something. Oh, Rachel go topless, did she? Oh. Joe. Oh, right, yeah. So you buy the photos, right? You'll enjoy that, love. Thank you. Back Tuesday, all right? Tuesday. Thank you. After anything in particular? No, no, no. Oh, yes, actually, I was just wondering if you could recommend any of your, um, adults' titles. Depends what you're looking for. Well, what about this? Um, <clears throat> Guide to Love, uh, Volume 3. Now, not much cop, them things. Beat around the bush too much for my liking. Look, if this was a curry house and I was the waiter, I'd be asking you how hot you like your sauce. And? Well, I mean, I could just serve you up a meal from a pan out the kitchen. Or I could sort you with something just a little bit spicier from my secret pantry. Look, all I'm looking for is something for myself and my wife, something a bit racy, um... something to get the animal passions aroused. Animal passions, eh? Yeah. This should do the job. What is it? It's a vast improvement on that half-hearted garbage I've got out there. Fields of fun. Lousy title. Hot movie. Honestly? I'd go so far as to say it's a work of art, erotically speaking. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'll, uh... Yeah, I'll, uh... I'll take it. That's a fiver to you. Number one bestseller. There you go. Right, um, thank you. Won't have the energy to bring that back tomorrow. So your Al fella's out all night then, is he? Well, for the next two hours at least. Oh, good lad. Right. This is a list of the PGC courses still available at the local colleges. Oh, right, yeah. Plenty to choose from there, isn't there? Well, hardly. They're snapped up by the hour. Is that right? So we'd better get a move on. OK. Right, you got your application form? Yep. And you're sticking with sociology? Yeah, I don't reckon so. Well, it just so happens, by amazing coincidence, that that's my dad's degree. Oh, right. Hey, look at that. So all we have to do is scan that onto the computer, change the name to James Cockle, and hey, presto. Oh, I'm the brain of Britain. <laughs> Come in. Only me. Hey, it's us. You busy? Oh, yeah, that's pay. In that case, your wish is my command. Dad, everything's under control. Yeah, well, maybe I'll just go out and supervise, eh? <laughs> hey, I'm gonna have to put you on the payroll at this race. <laughs> you never know, do you? So what's new? Well, I had a visit today. Who from? From the Crown Prosecution woman, filling me in about the court case. And? Well, that cheeky cow Leanne's pleading not guilty. You're joking. No. She must think having a whinge and flashing a bit of cleavage if the judge is going to get it off. The bare-faced... I'm sorry, love. Oh, don't be that. As far as I'm concerned, she just made her biggest mistake. Everyone knows she's banged to rights. All this means is that she'll cough the full whack and that'll do me fine. 
something too right. And listen, once she is out of the picture, we can start looking to the future. Because believe me, it's going to be rosy all the way for the both of us. Hi. Just in time. Oh, what's this? Fresh oysters. Served with chill stout. What's all this in aid of? <coughs> As if I didn't already know. <laughs> oh, was that a fish slice in your pocket, or are you just pleased to see me? Oh, yes. <laughs> this is um, my contribution to the evening. A um, little bit of erotica. Oh, since when did we need porno films to spice things up? It's not a porn film. It's art. Ah, oh, well, if it's art you're after, feel free to dip your paintbrush to pick up so. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind while I uh, prepare the oysters. <clears throat> in the meantime, why don't you slip into something minuscule? I'll be back. Yes, look at that. I feel brainier already. <laughs> Anything else? No, nope, you're the boss. Right then, we've given you a degree in sociology, minoring in American studies. Hey, yeah, look, does it have to be American studies? I can't stand the yanks, me. Xenophobe. Hey, what's your gob, you? Full academic history on your CV and a completed PGC application form. All we have to do is press that. Done. Hey. Sent it. Where? See college. On that? Yeah. <sighs> that is frightening. What is? Uh, Dad, I didn't think you were gonna. Yeah, well, we finished early. <laughs> Evening, all. So, I thought I'd come home, see my son. Right. Wouldn't want to get in the way of the Al bonding, you know. <laughs> oh, I'm sure you wouldn't. Yeah, I just wish my Al fella to come home early from the boozer once in a while, you know. <laughs> Lucky lad. Uh, yeah. I hope you don't mind my asking, but what's he doing here? Nothing. Nothing. Because if it's anything to do with drugs... Dad! Think about. Or computer porn. Hey, aye, aye, listen. I might be an ex-druggie, but I'm not a pervert. I'm waiting. Well, Jimmy was thinking of buying a computer. Yeah, computer. And, well, everyone round here knows your lad's the local whiz kid. So, how do you explain this? Are you familiar with the word fraud? Yeah. Well, I doubt my son was till he hooked up with you. Most of this was his idea. Is that true? Thanks. Didn't think you were the type to grass. Sorry, mate. Good God. Did you actually believe that you could pull this off? Yeah, well, why not? I mean, there was some 30-odd-year-old jock pretending to be a schoolboy for years, didn't he? But do you realise what taking a post-grad course entails. Well, nothing I can't handle. Lectures, tutorials, presentations, dissertations, answering questions, having opinions, showing half an ounce of intellect. Dad! <laughs> no, it's all right, Danny. He's right. I mean, why should a thick get like me waste his own or anybody else's time on trying to get an education? Look, nobody's stopping you. But why don't you go to night school? Start with a couple of O-levels. 
I don't have time for all that. But you're trying to run before you can walk. Yeah, and what am I running from, eh? My own bloody reflection. Cos every time I look in the mirror, I just see someone who's going to be stuck serving chips till he snuffs it. Not necessarily. Oh, get real. I can't afford to go back to school for a million years. I've got a six-week-old baby to provide for. And I wanted to give that kid something that my other kids never had. When they were in the playground and their mate said, what's your dad do then? What do you think the answer was, eh? A tea leaf? Hmm? A dosser? A drug dealer? Can you understand how it would make me feel if our little Billy turned round and said, teacher? <sighs> but how on earth would you cope? Look, if it's too hard, I'll pack it in. Listen, you must have had teachers at school that you thought were crap. The ones who made it dead obvious that they couldn't give a toss. The ones with more certificates than soft Joe, but they were useless all the same. Well, wouldn't you rather have had someone who cared? Someone who was a fraud? Oh, no. Those fellas are the ones who were the frauds. You know that. Look, I'm sorry. But I can't sanction this. I'm a school governor, for God's sake. You might end up at Brookside Comp, teaching Daniel. I won't. Oh, come on, this is me big chance. And if it all blows up in your face? Then I'll say I've never met you before. You do realise that you're going to need O and A-level certificates as well? Already sorted. I think I need a drink. Put the film on. Yeah. Um, won't be taken. Anything happened yet? No. Awful theme tune. Right. Here I come. It's a pig, Max. You're a life pig. Do you know what? It makes my pigs go warm, mushy just to look at you. Hello, stranger. I think it's the white pig that does it. So where have you been hiding? Oh, you know what it's like. Life's one long stock I thought you were avoiding me. I was if. No, busy boy, that's all. Good. As I take the thought of you worrying about them singing lessons. Don't remind me. <laughs> I wasn't bothered, you know. No, maybe not. But Mr. Insensitive isn't in it, is he? Look, you were trying to help me. And let's face it, I need all the help I can get. No, you don't. You're a star. <laughs> if I'm such a star, how come I go home stinking a paddock? I bet Cher worked in a chippy for years before she met Sonny. <laughs> I don't know. I just feel like I'm living in some stupid fantasy world. No. I mean, my dad's got the right idea, hasn't he, trying to get into college? Like, if you're taking away this stupid pipe dream, what have I actually got going for me? Well, you've got a gorgeous little daughter, a mum and dad that love you, a singing voice that doesn't need lessons. And you've got me, if you want me. I don't know. Oh, thanks very much. No, I do like you. I mean, you know, really like you. But? I just don't want to rush into anything like some lunatic. I think there's a lot to be said for you, his lunatic. <laughs> and you should know. So? Is that a maybe? Yeah. A definite maybe. <laughs> <coughs> oh. 
Oh. We don't need dirty films. Oh, dear. Or oysters. Or powdered rhino horn, for that matter. Oh. Mm. Oh. We just need each other. That's right. Oh, and uh, the odd bottle of uh, stout. <laughs> oh, made like brew, love. Have you been going through my stuff? I was sorting your washing out. Why did you lie to me? I didn't lie to Yes, you did. Are you trying to make me look stupid in front of my friends or what? No. Then why? And why take out all the pictures with my costume on? You don't want other people to see me, do you? Do I really look that bad? No. Then what is it? Am I too big or something? Is that why you've hardly touched me since we've got back? Rach, will you look at them? I've chucked the pictures out of me on the beach and all. I didn't want people to see pictures of either of us, all right? Oh, well, cos you're gorgeous and I'm... What? Well, compared to you, I'm a show, aren't I? Oh, as if. I'm not soft. Christian, I'm serious. I think you're lovely. That's not the impression I've been getting lately. How do you mean? Well, ever since we've come back off holiday, I feel like you've been laughing at me behind me back. I haven't, honestly. Well, what about all the snide comments you made to keep on coming out with? Yeah, well, I've told them to pack it in. They've come from you, haven't they? No! I mean, yeah, we talk about stuff, but... <sighs> Rachel, can I ask you something? Yeah, of course. My crap, you know, at sex. No. <sighs> is that what all this is about? Oh, come here. What is going on inside that head of yours? No, and I just thought maybe you'd regret and get married. Christian, as if. Sure. I'll show you how sure I am. Come on. And there's powerful drama when a family trauma takes brotherly love to the limit. The film Miles from Nowhere is next here on 4. to any viewers of Wednesday evening's episode of Brookside who were embarrassed by the storyline featuring Max and Susanna Farnham. the world about all the horrible things her husband's done to her. She must hate him. Oh, hey, Chris. Didn't he come in? Hi, yeah. Hey, Kate. Oh, we've just been lying around doing absolutely nothing. So I see. So, all ready then, is it? What? We tea? Oh, no, I didn't realise the time. Rachel, I'm starving. I'll go and get us something. I'll do us something. It's all right if Kate stays, isn't it? Mm, yeah, great. Um, I tell you what, I'll go to the shop and get us something. Now, my treat. Oh, yeah, great. Thanks, Katie. Too long. Sorry, Chris, we were just watching telly. Forget it. Doesn't matter. Hi, hi, the local legal eagle. Ah, oh, Mr. Dixon. Wrong, please. How's that place shaping up? Oh, fine, thanks. Well, I hope you have better luck with it than I did, love. Oh, I'm sorry your business didn't work out, Mr. Dixon. Oh, I'm not. Oh? No, no. It's the best thing that ever happened to me. Open my eyes, it did. Still, I reckon you'll do well here. 
Because, well, aside from being surrounded by the Alfreds and Scallies that live round here, you're selling the right thing, look. Information, no how. Me, I was flogging tins of beans, packets of soup, hopeless. Just couldn't compete with the big boys. Still, that's all behind us now, isn't it? Hello, Mr. Dixon. Hello, Casey, love. Yes, well, good. Um, I must be going... Service be... industry, you see. That's where the future lies. And especially leisure services, which is, let's face it, mostly fancy food and posh booze, isn't it? That's what I'm moving into, if all goes to plan like. Excellent. Well, I hope it goes well for you. Oh, it will, love. Don't you worry. It will. Hi. Oh, yeah? Problems? Uh, yeah. One across avoids the issue five and seven. Starts with B, I think. It ends nil, doesn't it? Does it? South or engraver, say. Oh, Letcher. Yeah, of course. So, starts with B, ends with L. Isn't that what we'll be doing later? What we'll be doing? Sorry? Avoiding the issue. Birth control. Oh, yeah. Are we? Yep. But first, food. I'm starving. Well, it all seems quite ship shaped to me, right? Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you, Bing. Yes, I've been through it all with a fine tooth comb, and it's all above board, fair and square. And the money's in place, is it? The money is here. Oh, very good, very good. JC's ready and eager to sign, is he? Waiting for me right now, mate. So, the deal is done. You see before you the new joint managing director of Bob Rookie. <laughs> and, uh, Young Jacqueline's happy with a new partnership arrangement, is she? Ah, she'll be tickle pink, no sweat. You mean she doesn't know? She doesn't need to know, Bing. Not just yet, you know. I don't want to worry her before the court case and all that. But she's going to be well chuffed. Oh, dear. What? Well, quite frankly, Ron, that seems to me to be rather unethical and quite possibly illegal. Oh, I get it. You're jealous, aren't you? Are you serious? Yes, you are. You're jealous, that's it, isn't it? Mind you, I suppose it makes sense now. Here's you stuck in this shop, flogging packets of this, cans of that. And here's me moving on. Selling a concept. Atmosphere, ambience. Even so, Bing. If you don't mind me saying, that is a long shot, that. As if my own daughter is going to object to her old dad becoming her partner. <laughs> Yeah. What's this? What's it look like? No, I do. Just go and get a drink. All right, sir. Mick, is this such a good idea? What? Oh, come on, this having a party? Oh, I asked the kids if there's anything we fancy doing in there. This was the only idea that was legal. So, so come on, mate. Let's just try and enjoy it. Eh? For their sakes. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you fancy then? Oh, I don't know. Who cooked it? Boy. It's not the best selection in the world over there, but beggars can't be choosers, eh? Don't be soft. It's nice of you to treat us all. Yeah, it could have been something a bit more exciting, though, couldn't it? Better than anything he could drum up, isn't it, Chris? <laughs> <sighs> Are you all right, Christian? Yeah, yeah, don't mind me. Um, do you know what? I've just remembered. I've got off jacket with some paperwork. Um, I'll leave you to it, okay? Yeah, all right, Katie. I'll see you out. It's all right, Katie. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry about that, Katie, but when he's had a bad day at work, he just wants to be with me. To be quiet, you know. And to tell you the truth, I just want to be with him. Oh, I'm sorry, Kate. It's all right. I'll speak to you later, eh? OK. See ya. See ya. You OK? Christian? I thought it was only women who got convenient headaches. I'm not faking it. This happens to me when I get all tense. I get this banging in my head. Sorry, Chris. I'll get you some pie seat tomorrow. Mm mmm. It's good, eh? Yes. <laughs> it's perfect. It tops you, Ollie. <laughs> I'll keep an eye on that, son. Do you want to dish up for the girls? Yeah. Mm. 
Not good. Not good. Yeah. I would do this. You okay? Yeah. And then we're gonna go to the chippets and let's so just relax. <laughs> What? <laughs> what party time is it? Cassie. Are you not surprised? All right, kids. You look like butter would melt the pear to you. Do I want to leave your drumstick to the gorge? <laughs> no, you're all right, love. I'm not staying. I wouldn't want to spoil the fun. Cassie, it's not like that. Look, Cass. We don't want any trouble. Don't worry. I'm off. I wouldn't want to stand here and watch you two dancing on me mum's grave. You disgust me. The pair of you. Cassie! Elaine, don't. Leave her. What's wrong? What's going on? Nothing, babe. Your auntie Cassie's just upset about your nan, that's all. Cassie. Cassie, will you wait? Just leave me, Elaine. No, I won't. about something, then why don't you just say so? Then I'd know what to do. I'm not angry. Disappointed. With me? With everything. I just thought marriage would have been together, sharing things, not finding gangs of mates here every time I come home. Gangs? Oh, come off it. It was Rachel, only... are you going to let me have me say or what? Sorry, go on. I'm disappointed what marriage seems to mean to you. And I'm disappointed in the state of this place. I mean, this could be a lovely little flat, but look at the state of it, it's a tip. I cleared up myself, but I've only just finished work and I'm knackered. I mean, what have you done today? I'm sorry. Marriage is meant to be a partnership, Rachel. You can't expect me to do everything. away from anything. What are we doing here? I want to talk to me mum. I just sit still and she comes to me. Her face and a laugh. And then I talk to her. What'd you say? I start by telling her that I love her and I miss her and I want her back. I don't want to be on my own. I'm here, Cass. No, you're not. You're with Mick Johnson. Oh, Cass. Please, Cassie. Go to the police, Elaine. Are you going to go? No, we're not. Oh, you're too busy enjoying yourselves. That barbecue is the first time I've relaxed in weeks. Every day, all day, half the night, Mick and me go over and over it all. What good would going to the police do? How would it help anybody? It's not about help, is it? It's about doing what's right. And what you did is wrong. Look, Cassie, I don't want to attack anything you believe in. But can you really not see that what we did was only done for me mum? She was suffering, Cass. And it was what she wanted us to do. It was. It really was, Cass. Do you believe me? I believe that's what you think now. What you have to think now. All right, all right, look, don't believe me. But just let me ask you something now, yeah? It's not about what we did or why we did it. It's about why you're determined to make us pay. Why? Do you remember telling me that sometimes you felt a bit left out? Hmm? About being my mum's stepdaughter. About only being my half-sister. Do you think that insecurity is making you do this? 
No. I've asked myself that. Can't you see that I'm not just trying to be vindictive? It's about one thing, and only one thing. Mick decided that, all right, you and Mick took it upon yourselves to decide when my mum should die. You never had the right to do that. Okay, people hear about doctors making life and death decisions, but you two, you're not doctors. What gives you the right to choose what should happen to me mum, whether she live or die? <sighs> you played at being God, and that was wrong. And it wouldn't be right for me to just let a wrong go. <laughs> I mean, I know it was probably Mick Johnson, but that is not the main point here. The main problem here is that nobody has the right to take another human being's life no matter what the reason. Oh, I know you think it's got nothing to do with the police, but if you don't go to them, I'm gonna have to. Oh, I don't want to, but I will. Look, I can't carry this weight around anymore. One way or the other, the police are gonna have to be told, either by me or by you. It's your choice. All right, Jim. See him make it out today, is he all right? Yeah, he was in here this morning. I think he's laying low. Can't say I blame him. Not something I fancy doing, knocking the mother-in-law off, not even to get that place. What are you talking about? I'm only joking. Well, listen, I'm telling you, there's plenty of people around here that'll be thinking it, even if they're not saying it out loud. Yeah, well, don't start doing that, all right? Because anything that happened to Gladys had nothing to do with money. Nothing. Right. And if you can't say anything decent about a good mate like me, then say nothing, all right? You just keep your gob zipped. Oh, yeah, more trouble. Excuse me. Oh, sorry, I, I don't work here. I'm only... Um, sorry, I, I won't be here to hang on. Are you ready to order? Yeah, you don't need drinks. Um, Jackie, can you check your credit card, please? Yeah, OK. I'll send them over in a bit. Listen, Jackie, don't panic, but I think I just saw Leanne Powell diving to the toilets. Something wrong? What? Uh, no, nothing, no. <laughs> I was just trying to pay. Um, there's no knees, Alan, and it's on the house, OK? Oh, wonderful. Thanks. We'll have to come again. Yeah, see ya. What should we do? Are you sure it was her? Well, no. Do you want me to go in and check? No, just wait here, and when she comes out, tell me if it's her, yeah? OK. It's not her. <sighs> Thank God. Hang on. It is, it's her. <sighs> OK, don't panic. She's coming over. Um, Jackie, can I talk to you, please? Talk? That's all, I promise. Please. OK, in the office. Hang on. I'll have that. Stand still a minute. OK. You stay here, Casey. And if she starts being funny with me, I'll give you the shout and just call her, please. OK. That is the truth. It is, Jackie. Look, if this goes to court and they say that I did this deliberately, Andy will say that, even though it's not true. 
And if I get found guilty, which I think I will, then I could be looking at five years inside. Five years? I couldn't handle that. I crack up. Can't you find it in yourself to call it off? Get the charges dropped. If you could do that, and I know that it is a lot to ask after what I've done to you, but if you could just do that for me, Jackie, I'd do anything. I'd get out of your life. I'd, I'd get out of Liverpool. I'd, I'd do anything. Jackie, please. Please. Shut up. What? I said, shut up. Let's not argue, Ollie. Who's arguing? I was simply making an observation. That, um, well, we don't really know very much about each other. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Well, I think I know quite enough about you. I know all about your wife, your divorce, your children. That Danny's spending the night at Bell's tonight. OK. Well, I'll be clearer. You know more about me than I know about you. Suits me. Yes, but I really would like to get to know you. I, what you like, what you don't like, where you went to school. Have you any brothers or sisters or...? Three ex-husbands. Or another lover, perhaps. Well, not at the moment, anyway. <laughs> Look, we met and we liked each other. That's enough for now, isn't it? Well, well yes. I... Look, I'm not interested in swapping life stories. All I'm interested in at the moment is you and I making the most of this very empty house. Yes, well, I... I... But if you don't want to. Don't want to? <laughs> no. <laughs> don't be silly. I think I've forgotten how to do this. Now, we both know that you haven't. No, no. I mean, this, you know, being with someone new, uh, after all these years, it... Well, I just feel so strange. Well, you've got a lot of making up to do then, haven't you? I think maybe... Maybe it's because I... I'm just not used to casual sex. Is that what this is, then? A casual affair? Oh, no. N no, I, I didn't mean that... Was... You're so easy to wind up, Ollie. Come here. Look, why don't you just relax, eh? Enjoy yourself. We'll see how it goes, shall we? Yeah. Right, Hello, fellas. Everything okay? Good. Evening, Casey. Hi, Mr. Nixon. <laughs> Are Jackie around? Yeah, she's in there. Right. You can't go in. Why not? She's in a meeting not to be disturbed. <laughs> Who's she in there with? That's some top secret. All right, love. Yeah. Now, will you just wait outside, please, Dad? Well, don't you want me to stay in here with you? No. Now, go away, will you? I'm busy. Right. Where were we? She's really rock solid, certain, Mick. Either we go to the police or she does. And she will. She's completely convinced that what we did was wrong. How do you feel? Oh, I don't know. She's so sure that she's right. And I'm... I don't know. Well, I'm sure, too. I'm dead sure. What we did was done for your mum. That's what your mum wanted. And it saved her hours, days, even more of agony. And if I've got to stand up in court and say what we did was right, then I'll do it. Because it wasn't wrong, Elaine. It was right. I 
I think we are going to have to stand up in court, Mick. It was an ultimatum. Either we go to the police or she does. And she means it. I don't think we've got a choice. So let me get this right. You're asking me to say it was all a dreadful mistake because you don't want to be sent to jail for how many years? Five. Yeah, but no one really does five years, do they? No, but... It's still be too long for you, eh? You just couldn't face it. That's what I've got to face, Leon. Do you know these graphs in my eyes? Well, at any time in the next five years, these graphs could be rejected by my body. And even if they are OK, I still have to wear glasses or contacts for the rest of my life. And I've got no choice about that. It'll be the full five years before I know if I've recovered from what you've done to me. And you're asking me to stand up in court and say that, that you never meant it, it was an accident. Don't bother, Leanne. Five years won't be five years for you. You'll get some remission, time off for good behaviour. But I won't. I'll have five years of people feeling sorry for me to me face and just waiting for me to cave in behind me back. There's nothing that court can do to you that'll even begin to make up for what you've done to me. Nothing, Leanne. If I was you, I'd be grateful you were getting off so late. Now you get out of here and don't show your face anywhere near here again. <sighs> From sworn enemies to the best of friends, next on four, and Monica pays a visit to the Mattress King. Ages before we come here again. Hey, don't be soft. I'm not, it's true. You could arrest us on the spot. You sure you want to go ahead with them? Because once we've told them, that's it. There's no going back. Don't see we have a choice. Not with Cassie threatening to tell them everything. We've got nothing to feel guilty about. <sighs> well, I do feel guilty, don't you? No. We helped your mum out of her pain, that's all. We're not murderers, now. No matter what your Cassie says. Well, we've just got to convince the police of that, haven't we? Come in. <laughs> Who's that lot? They're a bit loud, aren't they? Yeah, that's where he's doing up Alna's new office. You got your stuff from the dry cleaners? Oh, great, thanks. We hang around the back of the door for us. Looks like your best gear. You got some flashy business meeting lined up or something? I'm in course, aren't I? Oh, yeah, of course. Is Leanne still pleading not guilty? Yeah, and it looks like it. Can you believe it? She knows she could have blinded me for life. It really upsets me. But she just doesn't give a toss about anyone. She just wants to watch her own back. Oh, the nerve of her! Well, I'm going to make sure the court knows she's lying. And I hope it counts against her when they do find her guilty. She can't get away at what she's done to me, Rach. I won't let her. Hi, right, Joe. Hi. I've been out spending me winnings from our card school. Oh, great. Well done. <laughs> Looking forward to the return match tonight, are you? 
Ah, yes, um, about tonight. I can't wait, mate, you know. Good company, good drink, bit of shuffling, bit of bluffing. <laughs> can't beat it, can you? Well, um... The way we're going on, there's going to be all kinds of eye rollers jetting in from Las Vegas next. <laughs> I somehow doubt it. What time do you want us around to yours tonight, then? Um, I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to make tonight's game. All oh, right. Well, I suppose we could always have it at ours. Well, I won't be able to be there, I'm afraid. Um, something's come up. I'm meeting a friend. Oh, really? I used to keep chickens, you know. I can still recognise the smell. <laughs> scared I'll fleece it again, eh? Yeah, sorry, but um, I'm sure you'll get by without me. Well, where are we going to find a replacement at such short notice? You always try, Jimmy. Uh, no, I don't think so. Thank you. All right. My ears are burning. Yeah, Ron's trying to arrange another card game. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he was just saying uh, he's going to have it tonight at his place. Yeah, but I think that we're going to be a bit tight in numbers. You know, I've already had to say no to a couple of mates from the Legion. It's OK, I can't make it anyway. But I can't say I blame you. The way my luck's going, you better not have it. Well, if you excuse me, have a good night. And you. Been out shopping then, have you? Certainly have. You whistle. All right, someone get married? No, 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 I just thought that uh, a man in my position ought to look the part. Mm. What position is that, then? <laughs> You'll find out. I might not have my shop or the movie anymore, but I'm not quite on the scrappy just yet. Right, so I've got to go make some sarnies for tonight. See you. Hey, I'll uh, listen. Uh, any chance you'll be in of a call round later? Uh, yeah, early on. Yeah, it's just I want a bit of advice on this call, something we're doing, you know. Yeah, okay. As long as it doesn't take all night. No, no, of course not. Five minutes will do. I'm listening. Um, keep it to yourself, uh, you know. Don't want Jackie finding out about me using dodgy certificates. Jimmy. It's you shouting your mouth off I'm worried about. I'm the one with the reputation to lose. Don't worry, son. Your old dad will still be speaking to you when he's a professor with fancy letters after his name. Come on, let's get you home. Like running away a million miles, hiding somewhere, somewhere where no one will ever find us. That's something we can't run away from, isn't it? It's just something you can't do. We've already run away from Telly the kids. That wouldn't have done any good, would it? I wonder Cassie hasn't told them already. She wouldn't do that. Wouldn't she? She's already on the verge of telling the police. Who knows what she'd do? I wouldn't want Tanya hearing it from anyone else but me. And I know it's a massive burden to lay on a child of that age, but I feel as though if I was telling her myself, at least she'd know how hard it was for me to live with what I've done. At least she'd get my side of things. Oh, God. Can you imagine her being dragged from school by the police? Oh, I'm sorry, miss. I've got to go home early today. My mum's been accused of murder. Elaine, he's up, will you? You're not a murderer, and you know it. Come on. Let's go and talk to him, man. See if she can help sort her and tell him. Thought you were going home ages ago. I was, yeah. I ended up having a natter with Jackie. Oh, right. What's the matter? Nothing, just you preferring to spend all your time with your mates rather than me. Oh, we were just talking about a court case. She's yeah. getting a bit wound up about it. Yeah, I know, Rach, but we had. Oh, look, forget it. it doesn't matter. Who well, what? It doesn't matter. Well, what does it matter? But we had all this the other day, didn't we, about you spending all your spare time with your mates. You're meant to be a married woman now. I'm sorry. I know. Come here. I don't know what goes on inside that head of yours sometimes. You make me feel scared to open my mouth. You don't want that, do you? No, of course not. Should we still mates? Yeah, of course. You gonna come up and see me during your break? Yeah, see you later. See you in a bit. All right, mate. Hiya. You're off down to Bristol soon, eh? Oh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Mum's lined up a church and everything for the blessing. Oh, nice one. Well, listen, give her my love, won't you? And do us a favour, can you take some stuff down for Ruth for us? Oh, yeah, of course I will. Nice one. Hey, Chris. Mandy's gonna be made up seeing Rachel in a wedding dress, isn't she? Yeah, I suppose so. Right, better go. Time to come back before I've got anything done. See ya. Tell her, I know the feeling. I'm gonna get a shift on myself. Cheers, Chris. Cheers, mate. And if I don't see you before you go, have a nice time in Bristol. Aye, aye. Look what the cat's dragged in. Hey, do you mind? Cost me an arm and two legs, this. 
I thought you were skint these days. Yeah, not the way my looks go at the moment, Sin. Not that short anymore. No, only in the inside leg measurements. <laughs> you can mock. I know what I am. Hey, you're going to talk yourself out of an invite to the big do you know? What do? I want to celebrate that Liam one going down. She hasn't even been found guilty yet. No, she will. Well, I'd like to be there to see the fair flying if she isn't. See you later on. Fair enough. Mr. Dixon, you look um, very cool. You win with some cuts of mustard, don't you think? Yeah, yeah. Dad, what have you got on? Do you like it? Well, it's a bit more, you know, this century than what you normally wear. Hey, hey, there's nothing wrong with keeping up to date, is there? Even at my age. No, of course not. So, have you bought it for a special occasion? Is it something you haven't told us? Uh, no, no, uh, not exactly, no. I just thought I could wear it in, uh, in court with you. <laughs> All right. I want to look smart, don't I? Yeah. You want to be careful. You might end up getting locked up at the fashion police. <laughs> Looks like someone's been having a tidy round. Or well, someone's been turning the topsoil over. Maybe your Cassie's been. You may have wanted to plant some flowers, you know. Or maybe the cemetery people needed to do something. Like what? I don't know. Weeding it. You know, with being a new gravely. No. Someone's been messing around, I'm sure of it. Looks like someone's been digging or something. Hang on. I'll go ask the cemetery for her. Did you have a good walk? Yes, sir. He's asleep. So I'm making a line on the way to the cemetery. What did they say? Not much. They seem wound up. They didn't say anything about the heroin, did they? Hey, don't be worrying about that. Whatever happens, we're in the clear, aren't we? So I'm making that a line, keep the mouths shut. Which will go off, all right? Yeah, yeah. It was busting his lungs to start with, but he soon settled. Right, I'll see you in a bit. All right. Don't forget I'm going to our vowels this afternoon. No, okay, okay. I'm only nipping round to Wally. He's gonna help me fill me for me. Oh, wait, Jimmy. Look at the kip of this. I didn't want to think I was applying to rule the world, not getting an epoxy course. You know, I can't credit you getting on this course. And don't be making a show of yourself with Ollie. He must have better things to spend his time on than helping you. OK, I won't outstay me welcome. Well, you better not. I've got a christening to organise, remember? I know, I know. I just don't want to miss me big chance in life, do I? Is that you? I think this little devil's just filled his nappy. Your turn. I know you know the way things happened, Mum. But I hope to God it was what you wanted at the end. Just wish you were here now with me, that's all. So you could help us explain when we go to the police. Because that's what we've decided to do. Get everything out into the open. So nobody thinks that we've got anything to hide. Elaine. Uh, yeah, I'm just finishing. Elaine. Just another minute. Elaine, please. We've moved her. What? Your mum's body. It's not in there. But the police came last night. They've exhumed their body. We're taking it away for a post-mortem. <gasps> All right, well, I'll see you later, then. Yeah, I'll see you later. So, what have you got planned for the rest of the day? I'm going to carry on packing to go to Bristol. I had time to do everything yet. Yeah, look, Rach, I needed to talk to you about that. The way things are going, I don't think we'll be able to go. Why not? It's Jack. He's only going to buck me in all day Wednesday. Oh, no. Well, you'll be able to swap with Mike or someone. I'm sure he won't mind. Rachel, we can't keep on expecting other people to put themselves out for us, can we? And anyway, well, Mike Dixon, he's the last person I want to be on favours to. Can't we just try? Look, all I can suggest is we go another time. Well, I'm sorry, babe. I really am. Thanks. All right, Chris. See you later. What's up? What's happened? 
Augustine says we can't go down to my mum for the blessing. He's got to work, so we've got to go some other time. Oh, no. He was dead upset. I'm sure he just don't want to mess Jackie about, you know, with it being a court case and everything. Well, look, I'll tell you what, do you want me to have a word with him? Oh, would you? Yeah, of course I will, because I need you to take this lovely bag of goodies down to my beautiful daughter. How about the cat one? Ah, been a great help, that all, thanks. Wouldn't have been able to fill in this form without your help. Right, well, good luck with it. Right, hey, listen, um, it says somewhere I'm going to need a reference. Is it OK if I throw your name into the ad? Oh, no, no, no chance. I was dubious enough about helping you in the first place. I'm not digging myself in any deeper. Hey, come on, it's not all a con, you know. I mean, I do have to turn up and do the course and pass it. It's not like sending someone to do me driving test for me. Jimmy. Jimmy! Hi, love. All right, love. What are you doing bothering Ollie all this time? Hey, listen, it was Brill on the phone, Phil. Could have done it next to no time. Well, isn't this about time you came out? Uh, all right. Just been having a little bit of an intellectual discussion in there, that's all. Uh, sorry, but I've got a previous engagement. Sorry you kept you, Ollie. I haven't kept him. He was made up showing me how clever he was at form filling. The only form you know anything about is form on the horses. Now, will you get back round here? Now. Oh, me poor mum. Come on. I knew we should have gone straight to the police. What right have they to go round robbing graves? Your castle must have been to see them. You know, they wouldn't have exhumed the body otherwise. She's probably accused us of all kinds. And what are we going to tell the kids? We haven't even got a solicitor. Oh, no, me. That'll make us look really guilty turning up with a solicitor. Elaine, I know what it's like in court. I know the way they can tie up in knots. No, we should go there, tell them everything, get out in the open and tell them the truth. Come on, babe, let's get in the car. Oh, it's horrific, Nick. Oh, my poor mum. Look, we need to get home and sort the kids out. I can't believe they've actually taken her out of the ground. That fella said the police can do what they like. What, just dig up people whenever they feel like it? Just get in the car, please. Without even asking our permission. Elaine, your mum's body is probably going to be used as evidence against us. <gasps> We're the last people they're going to ask. <sighs> upset, you know. So, Mike, can you imagine what I felt having to tell her? Yeah, but the thing is, I don't want to sound like I'm interfering. But I just want you to realise how important it is to her. I know it's not the proper wedding, but a moment be made up to see that both of you are there for the blessing. All right. All right, mate. Is Jackie about? Yeah, I think she's got a rep in the office with her at the moment, mate. Oh, I'll put her out, Is she expecting you? Well, she called and asked me to come and see her. Oh, you look like being in, eh, lad? Fingers crossed, then. Yeah, see you later. Look, tell me to keep me nose out. But I'll have a word with Jackie Dixon about your changing shifts if you think it'll help. Yeah, but look, there's no need for that. Cos can you keep a secret? Yeah, of course, what? Well, I haven't said nothing to Rach cos I don't want her to get her hopes up. But I've been asking someone to swap shifts with me all day. Fingers crossed, mate. I think I might have sorted it. Oh, brilliant. What am I like worrying about today? I should have known you'd be on the case. Well, best of luck in sorting out. Yeah, I'll see you later, eh? Yeah, when you get back from Bristol, eh? Come in. Oh, yeah. Thanks for coming over. No problem. So, do all the customers get personal calls from the owner now? No, only a select few. Jack? Oh, sorry. Excuse me, love. Uh, I've got a few things to do around the house tonight. You know what the lads coming around, so I think I'll knock off. What do you mean, knock off? You can do what you like. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> just a figure of speech, you know. I just meant that. There's a few things that I need to get done. Listen, you can do us a favour, though. If Maxie Farnham shows his face, tell him that the Cincinnati kid will be waiting for them round at ours tonight, if he's got the nerve to try his luck again. The what kid? Never mind. Just tell him ours is where the action is. All right. Ta-da. See ya. Sorry about that. No problem. I'm in no rush. So you're all set, then? Why? Where are we going? The court case, Leon Powell. Oh, court, yeah. Oh, you haven't forgotten, have you? No, of course not. I just thought you wanted me for something else. Like what? No, oh, nothing. Doesn't matter. So, the trial. Yeah, you are being called as a witness, aren't you? I've had me letter, yeah. That's good, cos I'm counting on you to help me get here sent down. She'll get what she deserves. She's bound to. She will if you get your story right. I'm only gonna say what I saw. Yeah, of course you are. 
So is that all you wanted me for, then? Well, pretty much, yeah. You haven't even got time for a drink? No, sorry. Yeah. Right. I'll get off, then. Hey, we'll be having a drink at the end of the week, though. We'll have the champagne out, then. Celebrating Liam being found guilty. Right, I'm off. Give my regards to Val. I will. Keep your eye on William, won't you? He'll be fine. Hi, right, sir. Hi, love. Yeah, I'll put a new lamp holder on that for you. That should stop it flickering. Oh. Cheers, nice one. Thanks, sir. His bottle's in the pan and it's warm in it. He's got a clean vest and that's on the table iron. And if not back, he'll need his bath by seven. Well, that's me, sort of. But what about the baby? <laughs> oh, I'm going. I'm leaving you to it. Stop threatening his incapable hands. Ta-da. Ta-da, Jack. Hiya. Hang on, boys. Before you go in, I need a minute. Well, what's happened? We need some help. Sounds ominous. We're on our way down to the police station. Can we tell them about Elaine's mom? They already know. Oh, brilliant. What? They already know. How come? Cassie must have told them. <gasps> you what? Her own sister bubbles to the bissies. God. Whatever happened to family loyalty? Hey, listen. I hope you haven't said anything to her about me setting you up with that smack. Because if she's shopped you, Mick, she'll have me hanging by me thumbs off Runcorn Bridge. Look, will you just stop whinging about your own flame and neck, will you? So have the police been in touch? No, we just got back from the cemetery. They took Gladys's body for a post-mortem. Well, look, just say the word and you've got all the help you need, you know? Thanks, then. I could do with someone to look after the kids for a start. Yeah, don't worry about that. You don't have to ask, you know that. Do you need anything else? Someone to look after the chippy? Yeah, go ahead. I could do it there over time. Cheers, Jimmy. I mean, hopefully it'll only be for a couple of hours. Like. So did the kids know about, well, why the busies are took Gladys away? I mean, did they know about you helping it along, like? No, it hasn't felt right to tell them, you know. Well, hang on, that's not going to be down to me, is it? Oh, of course not, sir. I not expect you to do that. No, we'll, uh, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Anyway, thanks, fellas. See ya. Yeah, good luck, mate. They're going to need it. Mick, I've been thinking, if anyone's going to take the blame for what happened, then it should be me. She was my mum, not yours. Oh, don't be soft. Anyway, your Cassie thinks it's me that forced you into all this. That's bound to be what you told the police. But you said yourself that you worried about Gemma and Leo. I could tell the police I did it on my own. How could they prove different? Elaine, listen to me. We both knew that at that moment, what we were doing was the right thing. I mean, it's not like we planned it. Either of us. So come on, let's go down the police station. Tell them the truth about what's going on. Oh, Mick. I don't know what I'd have done without you these past few weeks. You know, you're the only thing that kept me sane. Stop. Um, listen, I've had Sinbad around the early on going on about us not being able to go to Bristol. All right, yeah. He mentioned he might say something. Peter, you shouldn't be going around discussing our personal business with other people. I'm sorry. Just sort of came out. I was upset. I don't know what all the panic was about. I was just so disappointed that we weren't going. I mustn't have been thinking straight. I just didn't want you to get your hopes up too high. I mean, you didn't really think I'd let you down, did you? Of course I didn't. Oh, I don't know what I was thinking. I really feel like this has spoiled me surprise. I was really looking forward to tell you that we can go. Really? Yep. Well, have you managed that? Well, I had to get down on my hands and knees and beg and sell my soul. But in the end, I bribed one of the new girls to change ships with me. Oh, that is brilliant. Things I do for you, eh? <laughs> oh, Chris, <laughs> I don't deserve you. I really don't. Busies haven't wasted much time, have they? Oh, what have they come mob handed for? It's not as if they're a gang of terrorists, is it?
Where are you? What are you doing there? Staying out of it. We don't want to look as if we're involved, do we? Get in. You can see nothing but the truth's debate on euthanasia in its full, unedited form starting later tonight at 10 past 1, here on 4. Good afternoon, Mr. Johnson. I'm Detective Sergeant Cox. This is Detective Sergeant Anderson. Where's my wife? She's just next door. We'll be taking statements from you both in due course. We were just on our way down here before you came for us, you know. We wanted to talk to you together. I'm afraid that won't be possible now. Well, why not? We've got nothing to hide. We're going to tell you everything anyway. All about Mrs. Charles instead. Yeah. You can tell us now. Not without Elaine. As I've just explained, Mr. Johnson, that isn't possible. OK. If you won't let us tell you together, then we both want a solicitor. That's your prerogative, Mr. Johnson. As for your wife, it's her decision whether or not she has legal representation with her during the interview. My colleague will explain the procedure to you. Well, what about Elaine? Can't I even talk to her? Not just yet. We want to speak to you together. Sorry about the wait. Where's me? Ah, I've just been talking to your husband. And apart from his concern for you, you'll be glad to know he's fine. So when can I see him? Not just yet. But I'm sure this won't take too long. <sighs> Firstly, can I just offer you my condolences for your mother's death? Oh. Thank you. I believe she was suffering from cancer. Yeah. I lost my mother to cancer. She was ill for a long time before I finally took her. It's been nearly 18 months now. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Thank you. There's nothing to be worried about, you know, Elaine. Mick's told me you were coming down here anyway. Yeah, we were. Now, before you tell me about what happened, I want you to think it all over. I know it'll be painful, but try to remember everything, OK? By law, I'm required to offer you the chance to be accompanied by legal representation. Do you want a solicitor with you in this interview? Oh, no, I, uh, I don't think so. I haven't got anything to hide. I just want to tell the truth. Now, I've just got a few things to attend to, and while I get them sorted, I'll make sure you get a cup of tea. Thanks. Just relax. This will all be over quite soon. Are you OK with those? Uh, just about. Hi, Dan. Sorry. Don't worry. My arms are really off. Come on, Dan, give us a hand. I'll just get the last of it and not the car. Oh. Can you 
you at least try to be a little bit more civil? You didn't care what I thought before, so why should you care now? Because I happen to like Eleanor, and I know that she likes you too. Look, she might have moved into Mum's shop and her bed, but she's not going to get me on her side that easy. Hello, Jim. Hi, Hessen. Listen, can't stop. Any news on Mick and Elaine? No. Oh. I've sent the kids to the pitches to get them out the way. They haven't got a clue what's going on. Best thing for them. Listen, you haven't seen Danny Simpson, have you? Been no one in at theirs all day and I haven't seen him around, like. No, why? Well, I just wanted to have a word with him about some bit of good news, you know. Oh. Hello? Mick? Yeah, what's going on? Oh, right. No, no, the kids are all right. Yeah, 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 I sent them out. No, they're fine. Don't worry about them. Well, you want a decent solicitor? Well, I'll phone round, see if I can get something sorted out, OK? Don't worry about it. All right, mate. Yeah, see you later. Ta-da. Do hmm. you have to have a brief? Yeah, they're still getting questioned by the busies. You don't know anyone, do you? Well, I'll give you the name of the fellow I had. You ended up getting stuck away. That's true. Listen, uh, he never mentioned the heroin, did he? No, Jimmy, he didn't. Can't you stop thinking about yourself? Mick needs our help here. Here she is, Leanne Powell, caught for. This is what you've been waiting for, love. Yeah. <sighs> I thought I'd be OK. It's Des and Tim singing, isn't it? I think they have all those robes and wigs on just to make people feel even more nervous than they already are. Hey, listen. You've got nothing to be afraid of. You're not the one on trial. Leanne's got to face all that. Yeah, but I'm just really worried about Stan's in front of all those people. You'll be fine. Yeah, but it's not like just telling someone what happened, is it? Hey, Ballas is going to do his best to make me look stupid, isn't he? You know what they're like interrupting you all the time, twisting everything you say. Jackie, I know you, love. Once you get up there, you're not going to let some toffee nose pat in a wig walk all over you. You've been waiting for the chance to say your piece for ages. Just tell them exactly what happened. And make sure that Leanne gets the sentence she deserves. Yeah. Danny! You better get to work. You see, Lindsay's not very happy with your eyes were ages for that, and now I've got to go over there because you've run out of cream soda. All right, all right, keep your hair on. Just wanted to tell you my good news. What's that? I've got an interview for that PCG. PGC? That's it. Thrill. Thanks. Listen, I was wondering if you could, uh, well, you know, give us a few tips, like, don't want to mess it up. Jimmy, I'm 15. You might be surprised to hear, but my interview experience is limited. In fact, it's non-existent. Right, see you later. See ya. Right. Is that OK? Yeah, I think so. I'm going to have to get some pictures and plants and stuff. Make the place look a bit more friendly. Oh, I'm sure you'll soon have it looking great. I'm going to have to put in a lot of long hours and late nights if I'm going to get this business off the ground. Well, we're only around the corner, so if ever you're too tired to go home, you know you're always more than welcome to come stay with us. Any time. Oh, yeah, sorry to interrupt. Have you got a minute? Uh, yeah, sure. I think a friend of mine's in need of your services. Well, I'm not really open for business yet. It's Mick. The fellow owns a chippy next door. Him and his wife are being questioned by the police. What, Mick and Elaine? Yeah. Ollie, I'm sorry, would you mind? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Your first customer. I'll get down and we'll take our chips home. Good luck. Yeah. Cheers, Ollie. Thanks, mate. OK, Mr... Uh... Sweeney, I've got the shop next door. Oh, right. OK, Mr Sweeney, i better get some details. Right. Oh, I wish they'd get a move on. I can't wait for all this to be over with. Everything's going great until the Ampel turns off. Oh, come on, Jack. Things are still going great. Yeah, but all the big ideas I had for the bar, I haven't had a chance to do anything. Oh, yeah? <sighs> what, um, what kind of ideas, like? Well, all sorts. I think that place could make a fortune. I just want to get on with it. I don't blame you, love. And I think you're right now, you know. Barbrookie's best days are still to come. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thought it was going to be late. Well, we probably won't even be called today by the looks of it. All the other cases are overrun. Come on, you never know. I feel like I'm the one who's going to be on trial. This collar's doing me, hasn't Hey, if you can help Leanne get what's coming to her, it will have been worth you having to put with wearing your suit. How do you think it'll go? Hopefully she'll get a nice long sentence. 
Aye, aye. There she comes, talk of the devil. Hi, Mr. Dixon. Look, I don't blame you two for hating me, you know. But if I could turn back time, I would never have done it, honestly. I really am sorry. Well, I'm going to let the court know exactly what she's like. I'll make sure of that. Excuse me. I'm required by law to tape all of the interviews that go on in this room. One copy for you and one for our records. Is that okay? Yeah. First of all, I'll identify the tape and then you can start telling me all about what happened. Now, just remember, there's no rush, so take your time. I know this is upsetting for you, but it'll soon be over. Are you religious at all, Elaine? No, no, not really. I only ask because, um, well, I found my faith really comforting when my mother passed on. But I suppose we all deal with our grief differently. Yeah, I suppose we do. I can see that you're deeply troubled about your mother's death. Yeah, I am. It hit us all hard, really. All of you? Even your husband, Mick? Well, yeah, of course. Oh. Right, uh, because your sister, Cassie, seems to think differently. Mick was brilliant with me, Mum, and he only ever wanted what was best for her. Right. Well, we'll, um, we'll go through all of it in a moment. So, are you ready to tell me all about your mum's death? Yeah. This is Detective Sergeant Anderson. This interview is being recorded. <laughs> The way with the Yorkshire should be in the next half hour. Oh, you might as well go along then, Dad. I've got to go to the witness room. No, why are you not leaving you on your own? Well, Ben will be with me. And anyway, I want you to be in that courtroom all the way through. I want to know everything that goes on in there. Aye, all right, fair enough. It's a bit weird looking, but at least it's warm and wet. Oh, cheers. Oh, no, bitch! Oh, no. Ah, oh, you sent your operation? Fine. Good. Believe me, you're better off without them. You eat wrong. Hiya, Jackie, love. Hello, Julia. I'd have known you'd put in an appearance. Nice to see you too, Ron Dixon. Oh, have I missed anything? Oh, Susanna Farm, have you kept me chatting? Don't worry, Julie, you're just in time. You do your best, love. Forget all these people watching you. Just say what you have to say. In, is the girl still pleading not guilty? Yeah, but the court will see right through that. Hey, we better get in and get a good spec. Yeah, all right. Hey, don't worry. OK, good luck. Yeah, thanks, Dad. Um, I'll sit with you, Ron, if that's no bother to you, lad. I brought some evidence. You can get very dry in there. Come oh. on, oh, Julia. What's she like, eh? Are you nervous? No, I just want to get in there and get it over, to be honest. Oh, this must have been a nightmare for you. you tell me about it. That's why I've decided that when all this is finished, I'm really going to go for it. I'm going to stop messing about and go out and get exactly what I want. Sounds like everyone better get out your way. Well, not everyone. How do you mean? Well, I was wondering, when all this court case is over with, will maybe mean you could go out or something? Are you asking me out on a date? Yeah, I am. <laughs> then, yeah, I'd love to. Mum took my hand and tried to put it on the pillow. I tried to stop her, but she had hold of my hand and she was forcing me to hold the pillow over her face. I didn't know what to do. But she was desperate. And she got this, this terrific strength from somewhere. 
I'm trying, but I... So then Mick put his hands on the pillow and pressed down. His hands were my hands. And then, um... It seemed to take forever. So it was Mick that actually did it? Yeah. No, I mean, no. But your sister's convinced it was your husband. She believes you're just covering up for him. Well, Cassie wasn't even there, and I'm not covering up for anyone honest. I've got the preliminary autopsy report on your mother here. It tells us a lot about how she died, but it can't tell us who did it. First you said it was Mick, then you said it was both of you. I need to know. Who forced the pillow down onto your mother's face and held it there long enough to end her life? I tried, but I couldn't. So it was Mick? Well, yes. Aye, aye, all. You want to watch that? You get done for it, you know. Water shortages and all that palaver. Yeah. Well, if the water companies use the necessary money, to repair all the underground leaks and pipes instead of lining their own pockets, there'd be no need to worry about any bans. All right, Trotsky, keep your head on. Listen, has your lad said anything about this interview I've got for the place on the teacher training course? Keep your voice down, will you? I've already said I don't want to get any more involved. Look, Ollie, I know you disapprove, but I think I'd make a really good teacher. How could you, with hardly a qualification to your name? Because I want to work with the kids that everybody else has given up on. Not like you like there. I mean, I wouldn't be stopping anyone from getting a good education or anything. You know, not all teachers give up on the wayward kids, despite some of the hysterical reporting to the contrary. I know. And that's the type of teacher I want to be. Come on, Dad. He only wants some advice. He needs to convince them he's worth giving a place to. OK, then. I'll give you a mock interview. It'll give you an idea of what to expect. Nice one, all. Come on. Leanne Powell, you are charged with the following offence. That you did on the 30th day of May 1997, unlawfully cause grievous bodily harm to Jacqueline Dixon, with intent to do her grievous bodily harm. How do you plead, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. I thought she was pleading not guilty. You may sit down, Miss Powell. Something weird. She obviously knows she hasn't got a chance. Either that or she's hoping to get away with a lighter sentence. No, no way, Julie. She's pleaded guilty to throw the book up for this. Wait, let's tell our jacket she'd be made up. So, Mr. Corkill, why do you want to teach? Oh, that's easy. For the holidays, mainly. Oh, right, that's it. If you won't make an effort, I don't see why I should. Look, I'm sorry. I'm just a bit nervous, that's all. Do you actually want to teach? Of course I do. Why? Because... Well... Because of our little Jimmy. And all the other kids like him, really. You know, the ones who are desperate for a second chance. The ones who no one's got any time for because they've gone wrong somewhere and they haven't got the money to buy themselves out of trouble. The kids who need something more than, I don't know, logarithms and fractions and all the other useless crap they try and force on them. Stuff they'll never use. And what do you aim to give them? Just hope and guidance, you know. Things that they need just to get through life. I mean, look. What's the use in knowing what pi equals to a little scally around here? The only pi they're going to come across are the ones filled with steak and kidney. Ollie, I want to help the kids who are in danger of going off the rails. You know, just try and put them straight. They should be taught stuff they need. Things that they can get interested in. Even with the best of intentions, I can tell you now, 
You won't stand a chance if you come out with that lot. Well, why not? It's important. But it's not what they want to hear. Look, if you can harness your passion and commitment and direct it into the right channels, well, you, you might be able to swing it. And how can I do that? How can I convince them that I'm serious about this? Let's start again, eh? And just hope for the best. Because in the end, all you can do is your best. Your sister-in-law is adamant that you coerced your wife into going along with your decision to end Mrs. Charlton's life. What? That's rubbish! What we did happened there and then. It wasn't planned. She doesn't know what she's talking about. Mrs. Charlton had been critically ill for some time, is that correct? Yeah. She got worse over the last few months. In the end, the pain was becoming unbearable. And is it true that you failed in an attempt to end Mrs. Charlton's life a few days prior to her death? Of course not. What are you talking about? Cassie Charlton claims that you tried to kill her mum before by injecting her with heroin. Look, we weren't trying to kill her with it. We were trying to help her with her pain. So you do admit to giving her heroin? We had to do something. The doctor wasn't giving her enough morphine. We couldn't just sit back and watch her suffer. OK, then. Well, perhaps you could go through the events leading up to Mrs Charlton's death. Take your time. And please, try to include everything. What happened? What's going on? She's changed her plea. She's pleading guilty. Guilty? Does that mean we don't have to appear? It's over. She's admitted it. Great, eh? Well, no, not really. How do you mean? She's up to something, isn't she? What happened after she pleaded guilty to the sentence of prison? No, she's out again on bail. They're postponing sentence till next week while they wait for the reports. What do they need reports for? Well, I'll tell them all about her. Jackie, don't worry, love. She'll get what she deserves. Oh, do you reckon? If I know her, she will have been given more kinds of sob stories about her unhappy childhood and what a hard life she's had. What have they fall for? It? What if I don't get the chance to tell them what that evil cow did to me and the effect it has on my life? She might end up getting off with it. And then the doctor arrived and signed the death certificate. He obviously didn't think anything was wrong, so... I think Mr Johnson could do with a break now. He's answered all your questions. He's told you about the circumstances leading up to Mrs Charlton's death. I'm afraid I've got a lot more questions to ask. We'll be detaining Mr Johnson for quite some time yet. I suppose we could take a break there, though, seeing as we've got a long way to go. Terminating the interview, 1715 hours, August the 20th, 1997. Switching off the tape now. You all right? Yeah. They've got all the details of what happened. They'll probably keep digging, but just stick to the facts, what you've already told them. OK. But what about Elaine? Can we find out what's happening to her? I'll try and find out what I can. So, when your husband forced the pillow down over your mother's face, did you say anything to him? Try to stop him? It wasn't like that. We both did it. But it was Mick's idea. I keep telling you we never discussed it. It just happened. My mum was holding my hand and forcing it down. But you did discuss not telling anyone after it happened. Uh, yeah. No, not at first. We were too upset, but when the doctor didn't say anything, we just didn't tell anyone. Was that Mick's idea? I don't know, it might have been. Look, Mick isn't to blame for this. We both did it. We did it for me, Mum. Don't you understand that? I know that you were doing what you thought was right for your mother. But in the eyes of the law, what you did is considered to be murder. You do know that, don't you, Elaine? You do know it was murder. Hi, 
our trending film drama next tonight based on the true story of a woman acting as a surrogate mother for a childless couple. Everything goes well until she discovers she's expecting twins. A child too many.